Hi, my name is David Warner Matheson, and for the past 10 years, I've been researching the connections between the myths and the stars, and the evidence that virtually all of the world's ancient myths, scriptures, and sacred stories are built on a common worldwide system of celestial metaphor, with the characters and events being based on specific constellations in the night sky. A year ago, on St. Patrick's Day 2018, I did a blog post noting that the legend of St. Patrick has much in common with other world myths and arguing that the figure of St. Patrick might be based on the constellation Sagittarius, based on the fact that according to tradition, Patrick drove out the serpents from Ireland and Sagittarius figures in myth often battle serpents or dragons associated with the constellation Scorpio. In addition, I noted that the tradition that Patrick was brought to Ireland as a captive in his youth, uh, that pattern is very similar to that of Joseph in the book of Genesis. And Joseph in Genesis is associated in some parts of the story with Sagittarius, as I discuss in my 2016 book, Star Myths of the World, Volume 3, or Star Myths of the Bible, uh, particularly the part where he's thrown into captivity uh, by his brothers, that, that part, he's definitely associated with Sagittarius there, as I argue in Star Myths of the Bible. My focus is primarily on the analysis of ancient myths, rather than on the traditions of various saints, although it can be shown that the traditions surrounding many saints are patterned on nearly identical figures found in ancient myths from other cultures. For example, in my more recent book, Star Myths of the World, Volume 4, Norse Mythology. I demonstrate that the traditions surrounding the death of St. Lauren, or St. Lawrence, are patterned, they're patterned after the death of the hero Heracles, described in the myths of ancient Greece. And these traditions are based on specific constellations in the heavens, in both cases the same constellations, for Laurentius or St. Lawrence, and Heracles. Similarly, in the story of St. Patrick, not only is the tradition of his captivity as a youth taken to a strange land similar to the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis, but the tradition of his driving out the serpents from Ireland can be seen to fit a very common recurring pattern found in myths from around the world of figures who fight and defeat or drive out, in some cases are defeated by a great dragon or a great serpent, including, of course, Apollo fighting uh, the great dragon Python at Delphi or Delphi, but also Heracles, also known as Hercules, fighting the Lernaean Hydra during his 12 labors, or Zeus fighting Typhon and imprisoning Typhon beneath Mount Etna, or Marduk slaying Tiamat in the myths of ancient Mesopotamia, or Maui battling a great eel, a giant eel named Tuna in the myths of the cultures of the Pacific, or Thor battling the Midgard serpent in the Norse myths, or Krishna defeating the great hooded serpent Kaliyanag in the Puranas of ancient India, and many, many others. However, although I initially suggested that St. Patrick might be associated with Sagittarius when driving out the serpents, due to the fact that Sagittarius is to the east of Scorpio, and so Scorpio sinks down into the west, and so uh, before Sagittarius does, so Sagittarius appears to drive Scorpio out of the sky, as the stars sink into the west due to the rotation of our earth towards the east, it's possible that the figure of St. Patrick might be associated with a different constellation rather than Sagittarius. And I'll tell you how this came about, I, uh, how this reassessment came about just recently. I recently received an email from a researcher named Melissa Campbell, who has been doing some remarkable work investigating the alignments of sites in Europe and the British Isles, particularly sites associated with St. Michael 
and lines associated with um, cathedrals or chapels or sites associated with the figure of Michael. And one of the amazing insights that she has written about is her discovery regarding lines from specific sites which are generated by the azimuth of the sunrise direction on the specific days of the year at that particular location in which there's a phi ratio of daylight to darkness. Now, the phi ratio or the golden ratio is that ratio where the proportion, the ratio between the uh, smaller segment and the larger segment is the same as the ratio between the larger segment and the whole, the sum of the both segments. In other words, we could divide a line into two unequal parts such that the ratio between the two parts, A to B, is the same as the ratio of the larger segment, we'll call that one A, to the whole A plus B, uh, the original line that you divided. So the ratio between the longer segment and the original line that you divided is the same as the ratio between the larger line and the shorter line of the two divided pieces. There's only one place that you can divide it. Well, there's, there's two. <laughs> there's only one proportion that you can divide it uh, such that that works, and that's the phi ratio, the golden ratio. And in her blog at her website, Mercurial Pathways, Melissa Campbell notes that we could divide the 24-hour day in this same manner and find the days during the year in which the relationship between the daylight segment to the darkness segment is the same as the relationship between the longer of those two segments, whether it's daylight or darkness, to the whole 24-hour day. And those would be phi days, is what she, she calls them. So uh, there's one phi day where the hours of darkness are going to be the longer segment, and then a different phi day where the hours of daylight would be the longer segment, but you still have the same proportion. So if on a certain day, here's how the math works out, if on a certain day there's 14.833127 hours of, let's say, daylight, that would leave, since there's 24 hours in a day, that would leave 9.166873 hours of darkness. So the ratio between the 14.833127 hours of daylight and the 9.166873 hours of darkness is 1.618, and that's phi. So in that case, Likewise, the ratio between the full 24-hour day and the longer period, in this case, the, f the daylight period, which is 14.833127, would also be 1.618, or 5. So if you have 14.833127 hours of daylight, you're going to have a phi day. Similarly, if you have 14.833127 hours of darkness, you have a phi day. So in a blog post that Melissa Campbell wrote entitled Michaelmas, Phi Days, and the Milky Way, Melissa explains that she discovered the importance of these days by examining the ratio of daylight to darkness on May the 8th, the day of the Feast of St. Michael in France. And she examined that at the latitude and longitude of Mont Saint Michel, noting that at Mont Saint Michel, on May 8th, you approximate a phi ratio of daylight to darkness. So then, once she discovered that, she, she she explains in her blog post that you can follow an azimuth of the direction to the sunrise from that particular site on its phi day, and when you start following that azimuth, you start coming to these uh, more and more Michael-related sites as you go along that line, and that uh, sometimes even the distance between these sites, the proportions will uh, be a phi proportion. You'll have segments that, that have the phi ratio. So uh, she has 
found lines extending clear ac across Europe, all the way from Skellig Michael in the very western, it's an island, it's a remote island in the ocean off of the western part of Ireland, all the way this line, uh, Michael line that she found, goes all the way to Mount Carmel in the Holy Land, all the way across Europe, all the way across the Mediterranean, all the way in the Levant. So based on the fact that some of the sites that she found along these Michael lines were associated with St. Patrick rather than St. Michael, she wondered if Michael and Patrick might somehow be the same entity in some way or related somehow, in, related to myth or in, ancient, in the ancient system. So she sent me an email and, and pointed me to this, these blogs that she'd written. And my initial response was, that Patrick appeared to be associated with the constellation Sagittarius, uh, while Michael can be shown to be associated with the constellation Ophiuchus. I went through some analysis of the archangel Michael from the scriptures of Revelation in uh, my book, Star Myths of the Bible, and I was pretty sure that Michael, the archangel Michael, is associated with Ophiuchus. And so uh, I said, you know, the figures in myth who battle dragons aren't always Sagittarius. The figures who battle dragons who are associated with Scorpio are usually associated with one of three different constellations. Sagittarius, as with Apollo, who's a god of archery, he uses a bow. He's often described as battling Python with a bow. Uh, you can see this, this depiction is more modern. It's from the early modern period. This is drawn in 1589 so that's still uh, you know pretty modern <laughs> even though it's hundreds of years ago but look the the artist here has included some celestial clues you can see there's actually like a Milky Way path going up between uh, Apollo and the dragon here just as the Milky Way rises between Sagittarius and Scorpio in the night sky and we also have a hill or a mountain depicted right behind and above the dragon and there's a little castle on top of it well Ophiuchus rises up above Scorpio and Ophiuchus in myth is uh, often appears as a mountain often appears as a tower or a castle or a tent in many myths and I, I talk about this in some of my books so this depiction, even though it's from 1589, shows the celestial correspondences of Apollo being Sagittarius, s slaying Python, or defeating Python being Scorpio. Uh, another uh, constellation, though, that fights Scorpio is actually Hercules. Hercules uh, figures battle Scorpio figures like Zeus battling Typhon, uh, when he throws the mountain down on top of Typhon, Zeus here in this ancient Greek pottery is clearly depicted in the outline of Hercules. And um, when he throws the mountain down on top of Typhon, that's Ophiuchus thrown down on top of Scorpio. Ophiuchus is right below Hercules. Um, also, when Heracles battles uh, the Hydra, Heracles, also known as Hercules, is associated with the constellation Hercules. Same thing with Thor, when he battles the Midgard serpent, that's Hercules battling a serpent. So then we also have a third constellation that fights Scorpio, and that's Ophiuchus. And that's a constellation that's located directly above Scorpio in the night sky. So Ophiuchus figures uh, often battle Scorpio figures and um, Michael the Archangel in this picture here you can see he's defeating the dragon in the text of Revelation it's described you can see here uh, he's using a spear that's very characteristic of Ophiuchus figures and also in this depiction and in many other depictions of the Archangel Michael he's holding a, a, a balance or scales in his hand and uh, that's because the constellation Libra, the zodiac constellation Libra, is located next to Ophiuchus in basically the exact correct position 
the relationship between Libra and Ophiuchus is the same as between uh, the scales or balances in this depiction and the Archangel Michael. So th those are clues that show you that Michael is associated with Ophiuchus. So therefore my initial reply was that Patrick and Michael appear to be associated with different constellations. But on further consideration, I realized, you know what? It's actually very possible that I might have been mistaken. You know, as we say in the army, I, I thought I was wrong once, but turns out I was mistaken. <laughs> anyway, um, as I thought about it some more, I realized, you know, when Patrick is driving out those serpents, uh, he may be associated with Ophiuchus because the serpents are often depicted as slithering away from beneath Patrick's feet, just as Scorpio is located under the feet of Ophiuchus. That's also why Lord Krishna in the Puranas of ancient India is described as dancing on the head of Kaliya Nag uh, because Krishna is associated with Ophiuchus uh, dancing on the head of Scorpio. Now, Patrick is also often depicted holding a long staff. In fact, Melissa Campbell pointed that out to me in her email, and she's right. He is often depicted with this long staff, and a lot of times that staff has a circular top with a shamrock in it. And the more I kind of considered that in my mind, it came to me that actually the shamrock, I thought it was associated with Sagittarius, but it turns out it's probably more likely associated with Ophiuchus. The staff is very... Um, characteristic of Ophiuchus figures, like Moses when he parts the Red Sea. And actually, uh, the shamrock, the three-leaf shamrock that Patrick is usually shown holding, uh, he's often holding it in his other hand, that and the circular top to his staff could very well be associated with the little circlet of stars which form the serpent head of Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus holds two halves of a serpent, and one half is the head end, and one half is the tail end. And the, the serpent half on the western side of the central body of Ophiuchus is the head end, and it has a little circle of stars, and actually that feature is very, very likely to be, the more I consider it, the celestial basis for the shamrock that's associated with Patrick. If Patrick is associated with Ophiuchus, as I now suspect to be the case. So you see that it actually has three little stars if you zoom in on that uh, head end of the serpent of Ophiuchus. So Patrick and Michael are indeed connected if both of them are figures who are based on this very important constellation, Ophiuchus. So I recommend everyone go over to Melissa Campbell's website and blog and read her very intriguing and important research into the alignments of sites in Europe and the British Isles. And um, her work also connects very nicely with the important research and analysis being done by Scott Onstott over at Secrets in Plain Sight. And Melissa's research indicates that these very precise alignments appear to incorporate very ancient sites. In some cases, these alignments even connect with Giza in Egypt, and uh, Scott Onstott has found that also. The existence of these lines with all these sacred sites raises significant problems for the conventional paradigm of ancient history, because lines stretching across such great distances, such as from Skellig Michael in the ocean west of Ireland all the way across to uh, Mount Carmel in the Holy Land, with precisely sighted sacred points all along the way requires a level of geodetic knowledge about our globe and a level of surveying skill that's not generally thought to have existed in extremely ancient times. And yet the evidence appears to suggest that it did exist, or perhaps the evidence even proves that it existed. At least it's very compelling. Um, this evidence fits in with the evidence in the ancient myths as well, which shows that there was this ancient system, this ancient worldwide system that all the myths, virtually all the myths from around the world are using. And it's a system that was already in place in ancient Egypt and ancient Mesopotamia and ancient India and ancient China, which means that it probably predates all of these 
extremely ancient civilizations, the oldest ones that are known to conventional history, um, which means that it probably comes from some very uh, even earlier culture that predates all of them by quite a long period of time because it, it spread to all these other cultures at some remote time in the very distant past. There's just so much evidence out there and there's many types of evidence, there's many directions in which to look uh, to find this evidence, many different uh, disciplines in the myths, in ancient archaeological sites, in these, in sacred geometry, in these alignments. And so I recommend keeping an open mind as we examine the existing evidence and as new evidence comes to light. I always try to keep an open mind and uh, I now think I was probably incorrect in my initial assessment of the St. Patrick legend. It now seems very likely to me that he is associated with Ophiuchus. As I said before, the traditions of various saints is not my primary focus, but it does indeed appear that the figure of Patrick, like some of the others, may be connected with some very ancient, and very uh, significant mythological figures, including the figure of Michael the Archangel. And as Melissa Campbell's research shows, Michael appears to be associated with these very important lines stretching across our globe. In fact, she even notes that a lot of these sites, these Michael sites, are located on hilltops. Well, Ophiuchus is a hilltop constellation, a constellation that plays a mountain or a significant mound or hill uh, in many ancient myths. So, uh, and, and also he appears to be associated with phi ratios. Uh, it's really interesting. So, I recommend keeping an open mind and the evidence appears to be really compelling, really overwhelming that our conventional understanding, our conventional paradigm of ancient history is in need of revision.